Hey guys, so I've got build episode number 14 for you. For those of you that are new to the channel, um, just a fair warning that these videos are actually filmed over a year ago. So the, all this footage is really old. I'm just working with it and sharing it, bringing it out right now. And um, so that's kind of the backstory to, to the build series videos. In this video, I'm getting more parts and I also pick up a new heater and I end up actually comparing it with the Chinese heater that I picked up previously. I bought a Chinese heater that a lot of friends and stuff like that were using and um, I wasn't so sure about it so I went down and checked out another heater that I was interested in and I picked it up instead and I do a little comparison on the two of them and uh, that's it. So anyway here you go build episode number 14. Anyway, um, I'm just doing laundry here at this laundromat and I got to do a, a homework assignment. So I'm going to work on that um, pretty well. But just before I dive into that, I felt like just saying what I picked up at the, the mailbox today was a couple things. So um, I did get the carbon monoxide detector. This is the one that you plug in. And then the last thing is this guy here. So I did get the 50 amp DC to DC um, charger from Renogy with the MPPT charge controller built into it. And uh, just seems like the way to go. Um, yeah, I had to do a little bit of homework. And instead of going with one battery, I actually had to buy two batteries because two batteries in parallel on 12 volts is going to give me a 50 amp. Um, one battery alone, they're like, it's, you know, the batteries like to be charged at 25 amps. So if you go like uh, 50 amps on one battery, it'll really shorten the life of the battery. It can take it, but it's not good for it. Um, so this is, um, so that being said, I bought two batteries um, so that they can, they can take that. 50 amps and they'll charge up pretty quickly with this thing so so here we got thermostat we got a couple um, lugs that's cool and then I've got the actual unit here uh, which is pretty nice it basically looks just like a kind of like a modem really so I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of these things. So that's pretty big, it's pretty stout. It's gonna have to go somewhere in here. Um, all this stuff's gonna take up space and, uh, but in the end, like having 200 amps of, uh, amp hours of battery power is gonna be pretty interesting. With the uh, silicone dioxide batteries, no doubt, so. Anyway, guys, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm gonna put all this away um, and sell the update of that stuff. I am now, um, I'll do an installation video on how I go about putting all this together. Um, and in the meantime, I got some homework to do and I better jump on that because I don't like leaving things to the last minute and I totally did with this one. This weekend though, holy shit, man. Look. This weekend was nuts, nuts, nuts. I'm way down in Surrey right now. I drove down here to take a look at this company that sells these planner heaters, uh, diesel heaters. And I went there, I brought my Chinese one into their uh, showroom and we looked at it and we looked at theirs and there was a vast quality difference of those two products. Um, <clears throat> and I decided to pick one up. So I picked up a new uh, two, uh, two kilowatt diesel heater. It's a little bit smaller than the Chinese one, um, but it should be just fine. And the nice thing about it is it's got an altitude system built into it. And uh, it's uh, pretty well plug and play ready to go, just like the Chinese one. So I think uh, that's what I'm going with, but way better built. Anyway, I'll give you a quick update later. I'll show them two side by side. We'll go from there. Okay, first up, this is the Chinese diesel heater. This is the box. By comparison, this is the box for the planner, so this is a lot smaller. Anyway, so you've got a mounting plate. This is galvanized steel. It's, you know, there's not much to it. It's pretty thin, it's pretty wimpy. Um, the idea is that you, you cut a bigger hole through your hull and then you strap this down and the heater goes through this thing and it, it sort of mounts onto this plate. Um, now, 
galvanized steel, it's fine. It's it's really kind of a cheap way of thing. To be honest, this is all gonna rust fairly soon. So that's the mounting plate for the heater. This stuff's fine. I don't see any problem with that, so that's good. Um, now the exhaust can, I'm not taking it out of the package, but this is not stainless steel. If you throw a magnet on it, um, I don't have one right now, but we did it in the store. Your magnet's gonna attach to this thing, no problems. And it's tack welded together, so it's uh, it's really not gonna last the long, long term. You might have to replace this at some point. However, for $250 for the whole kit and caboodle, that's pretty damn good. Um, now the exhaust pipe in this case is very thin and a uh, big concern about this is it's going out and this thing's going to get like red hot or there's going to be a lot of heat generated off of this pipe because it's basically just going into the bottom of that heater and then it's going to the exhaust pipe and it's just sticking out somewhere down below. That's that. That stood out for me. Um, here we've got a little silencer for the intake and an air filter that's you know, I don't see any problems with that. There's a little bracket here for the fuel pump. Uh, and then it comes with all the bits and pieces that you need, a little fuel filter, all that stuff. Um, here's some fuel line, you know, that looks fine to me. Um, and then your wiring harness. So really simple, but it's actually built really well. Like in my opinion, these are really nice connectors um, and, and I like it. The gauge of wire is, um, it looks like about a 14 gauge or 16 gauge wire, which is, um, it might be a little bit on the lean side of a wire, but uh, I don't know. Um, this is for the fuel line. These are just little, put everything together and this is your intake line. So, you know, not much here. This is aluminum. Um, the only thing I might say about this is it might not last too long if there's salts on the roads and stuff. But uh, anyway, that's, that's that. So that's all these bits and pieces in here for that. For 250 bucks though, man, this is pretty damn good. Like, there's, I don't have anything to complain about. So I'm gonna put this plate in there too, by the way. So the heater itself, before we get into that, let's look at the control. So you got, this is a control panel. You know, not much, I don't like how this uh, thing snaps onto this thing, but it, it'll work. For a lot of people that you just screw this on the wall and then this just snaps into place. And then this little wire, I guess you kind of tuck it somewhere. Um, they could have done a nicer job with this going up all the way in there so you're not seeing these colored wires. Um, but, uh, you know, that's cheap for you and some kind of remote control thing, which is kind of goofy looking actually and super cheap and kind of dumb in my opinion, but whatever. That's that. Okay, so the fuel pump. I can't really test this thing out and tell you how good it is, but um, that's it. You know, this is not uh, made of high quality material. You put a, a magnet to it, it's it's definitely gonna rust. Uh, so that's a big concern with this thing, but plug and play, it'll work. Okay, first up I found was like, this fuel line is sitting that way. And it's pushing against this rubber thing, and this rubber thing is kind of, it's not quite the right size and how they cut it, so doesn't fit really nicely. The other thing is that this aluminum part is actually inset from the plastic housing, which means that these bolts are going to be really tight to be able to um, suck all that in. Um, and then the other thing is that the intake side of this casting isn't flush with the top of it, so there's a bit of a gap. Uh, there's a gap all the way around, but I'll show you why that's there. It's the same thing in the uh, the other one, but it's uh, it's it's a lot better. So, so here you can see the whole heater. It's actually a pretty big heater, and um, you know it looks pretty good. Um, the motor doesn't feel like a brushless motor at all, um, but you know it's, it's I'm sure it's fine. And then you got your control board. Um, your glow plug, your fuel sensor, or fuel line, and then um, this might be an O2 sensor or something like that, or a temp sensor um, in the uh, combustion chamber. So that's that's all that is. Um, so anyway, that's it, you guys. Not much to it, but uh, 
you know, and I don't have a lot of complaints about this, except the casting material looks like it's a little bit on the cheap side. Of it. And these bolts right here that are going under your vehicle, these aren't stainless steel. Uh, they're just, you know, um, your standard zinc coated bolts. So that's not gonna last. Now the plastic, you got no idea what this is and whether it's high temp plastic or not. I'm sure to some degree it is, so. But when it's exposed to heat and it's off gassing, you know, what's going on there? Is that, is that okay? All in all though, for 250 bucks, this is probably fine. And it's gonna work. I just didn't want it in my van. So I'm gonna put it over here. I'll show you this one. Manual. Didn't even see a manual on the other one, by the way. Uh, this is the the controller for the unit. So this is very, very small, very nicely built little thing. But that's all there is to it. Um, and this part here is going to be the backer to it. So it's a, it's a it's a nicer lower profile system. Uh, the wire gets tucked in behind so you'll never see the colored wires. Uh, just a, a lot better unit overall. So this is their little digital digital control. The wiring harness on this comes with this loom as well, which is really nice. So if this is running anywhere outside the vehicle or even inside, it's just nice to have that extra container on there. Um, you got your lugs on here for just connecting straight to your battery. It's got some inline spade fuses built into this whole system. I think it's really well thought out. Here's another connection here for your fuel pump. Here's your fuel pump here. So, I mean, this isn't, this is a little bit better, but it's probably still going to be, um, you know, a bit of a concern with rust and stuff like that in uh, the long term. So. We'll see, keep an eye on that. At least I can get spare parts, but. Okay, the exhaust system. This is welded all the way around. I mean, all the way around, you guys. And this is stainless steel. It's built really well. Um, some of the mounting hardware for the pump. Some hose clamps, some zap straps, a uh, little plug for the fuel pump, I think. More clamps and whatnot here. These are more wiring harnesses, so this is going to go to, um, one of these is going to go to the controller, and I think that's this one, and then this one goes to, I think the fuel pump or something like that. Uh, you get a lot more fuel in. Here's the intake, and here's the silencer on the intake. Uh, so this is really nicely built. Um, I, I, like, I quite like the way this is put together. Nothing too fancy, but that'll do the trick. Before I show you the heater, um, I'll just point out that the exhaust pipe is really long, and it's uh, it's much better built. Um, this is true stainless steel, um, and it's you can't compress that. It's very strong. So that's and it also comes with this insulation sleeve. So then you wrap this around it up near where it goes to the vehicle for a little while, and it'll keep the uh, any of this heat away from the fuel line. This thing is meant to go into any jerry can that you want, and you can cut it to length. Um, this is just your pickup, so you mount this on the top and you install this from the outside going in so you don't have to fish something on the inside of the tank like you do with the Chinese one. Okay, you guys, so this is it, and this is the Chinese one. So this is very similar, right here and here. Um, it's, you know, got this little cap on there, as the other one does. And then you've got your rubber gasket, which 
for all intents and purposes, it looks like. It's, it's similar, but it's a little bit different size and stuff. Very similar design, but better built. Qualities there. Now here, it's all a level across here, which is really nice to see. And this is all flush here. It's not inset. There's not a big gap like this one. This is the mounting plate, you guys. Look at this. It's, this is 3 16 inch aluminum mounting plate. That's what came with this. It actually comes with a stainless steel one, but I uh, they said they had a couple of aluminum ones. And I said, I'll take the aluminum one because I, I'm probably going to cut it and uh, I'll be able to cut this material easier than stainless steel. This is the uh, air diffuser for in the vehicle. Uh, there were several different types. I chose this one. I've never seen this one before, but I gave that a go. So, and I do have the I have five feet of the, um, the piping. It's just in the other room, but it's very similar to the other stuff that's for this guy. So here it is, air heater planner 2D. 12p so it's 12 volt diesel 2 kilowatt made in russia there we go man that is way better so this is a nicer casting nice gasket material comes out of there really nicely and that's it, you guys. And this has got a built-in altitude kit in it. Built-in altimeter. Yeah, I'm really happy about this. So that's a comparison of the two. Even this thing, it's like really nicely made. That's beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna put it back together now and see the difference. And that is my new heater. That's it, that's the difference between those two. Um, the other one, as you can see, is smaller. It's two kilowatt versus five. Now, that's better for my setup in a smaller van, um, which means that it's gonna be running at higher output volume. And in diesel, in this kind of combustion system, that's better because it's keeping that area cleared out of carbon buildup. When you have a bigger unit and you're using that in a small space, it's going to be running on low a lot and then it's going to have that carbon buildup. Now in a bigger van, that's probably not going to be a problem. Um, now one way around that is to like, the guy was giving me some tips. He was saying like, if it's running on low and it's a bigger unit, you can wake up first thing in the morning after a long night and then just put on maximum output for like 15 minutes just to burn everything off and then bring it back down that's good maintenance tip anyway that's it i feel more comfortable with this because everything's in it i get i don't have to think about it the altitude thing's built in um plug and play system and i love the way it's built Hey guys, I'm um, just letting you know, I got my batteries. They're just sitting behind the passenger seat here. And I'm gonna go down to the uh, downtown yoga studio. Got a bit of work there to do this morning. But then I'm gonna crack into these two boxes and take a look and see how everything appears. And um, kind of get my day started from there. Um, I guess my next step here is to <clears throat> go ahead and size out all my wiring and lugs and that kind of thing, fuses and whatnot. So, and I would normally kind of do like a how-to sort of thing, but because I'm learning, just learning how to do all this, and I'm going to be consulting with another a van builder on all this stuff, it's it's good to cross-check your work if you're doing it yourself. And, uh, and you know, I'm pretty competent at doing stuff, but I am learning about electrical right now and uh i find it it's gonna be a fun process so anyway <clears throat>